John W. Rogers Jr. was born and raised in Chicago's Hyde Park community and the South Side. His mother, Jewel Stradford Rogers, and his father, John W. Rogers Sr., were both lawyers. Influenced by their entrepreneurial spirit, John started his journey while in high school, working as a vendor at both baseball fields. But it was his father's gifts that got him thinking about the future. But he's the one that exposed me to the stock market as a kid and made sure that after every birthday and every Christmas after I was 12, I got stock certificates instead of toys. And, you know, it really did impact my life and made me feel comfortable starting a money management and mutual fund company when I was 24 in 1983. Although John Rogers didn't follow his parents into the legal profession, they both played a major role in preparing him for his chosen career in their own unique way. Both expected me to go to law school, wanted me to go, go to law school, but they were pretty good about understanding when I made the decision not to do so. so I come from a family of entrepreneurs. On my mother's side, my great-great-grandfather, J.B. Stratford, had a hotel in Tulsa. It was called the Stratford Hotel, and it was very, 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 very successful. But unfortunately, uh, it was burned down in the Tulsa riots early, earlier last century. My grandfather uh, was a lawyer and helped his father, who was uh, going to be extradited back to Tulsa and be uh, possibly imprisoned because of the Tulsa riots. And my grandfather made sure that that didn't happen and created a very successful law practice. On my father's side, uh, he was a Tuskegee Airman and his father had been a barber in Knoxville, Tennessee and had his own barber shop and it was very, very successful, but he died at a young age. And my father came to Chicago and, and lived with a kindly uncle who uh, really looked out for him, helped make sure that he got educated. And uh, after the war, my father went to law school and uh, went to the University of Chicago where he met my mom. And like my mom, he decided he wanted to be an entrepreneur too. And so for most of the years while I was growing up, my dad had his own law firm right across the street from my mother's law firm. Now, they weren't married at the time, so uh, I had a chance to also visit with my dad and, and to spend a lot of time uh, watching him build his practice uh, as, as, as I was getting older. My parents were quite different, and so uh, you know, I often tell people that my mom lived in this big house in Hyde Park when I was growing up, and my dad lived in a studio apartment in Prairie Shores on the south side. And every week I went from one household to the other, and they're entirely different. And the best, basic message from my mom was that anything was possible. If you worked hard and you got good grades and you had some imagination, there was no barriers to success. And I think that had a profound impact on me and helped to inspire me to be an entrepreneur. On the other hand, my dad was very conservative. He didn't have that kind of broader vision. My dad was very, very disciplined and he had all these plans for me as I was growing up. And I think that that idea that he made it really clear that you could be successful if you just worked hard, lived up to your commitments you made to others. And so I think it was a nice balance. Because he started his own business at such a young age, thanks to the training and support he received from his parents and friends, Rogers recognizes the importance of mentoring. The president of Aerial Investments, Melody Hobson, was just 22 when she started at the firm. Another Aerial alumni, Arnie Duncan, started the Aerial Education Initiative in 1992. So when Melody Hobson started, uh, when she was just 22 years old, after she had spent a summer as a summer intern at Aerial, uh, it didn't take her long. I don't think it was more than two or three years before she was head of marketing and sales for the entire firm. And by the time she was 30, she was president and running everything at Ariel outside of the investment area. One of the other early success stories was Arnie Duncan. When he finished playing basketball professionally in Australia, he came and worked with us full time for six years. And along with his sister Sarah, he created the Ariel Education Initiative and then the Ariel Community Academy Public School that's now 16 years old. The Ariel Community Academy has become a national model. And Arnie made all that happen. So President Obama asked me to chair his council on financial capability. And our final recommendation to the president from the council was that we needed to have uh, built into the core curriculums of public schools throughout this country robust financial literacy programs. So we think that's something that if we can get our society and our community more financially literate, 
it's going to help solve the problems that we have in so many of our communities. Because if you think about it, if we have more uh, entrepreneurs in our communities creating jobs, it'll help our education system be stronger, it'll help cut down the violence, all those things will be happening. When you have entrepreneurs like Ed Gardner at Softsheen, George Johnson with Johnson Products, John Johnson with Ebony and Jet, they made such an impact on our community and I think helped philanthropy-wise, but it helped with the jobs that are so crucial. And so we're quite proud that uh, but both Melody and Arnie have been extraordinarily successful. Uh, you know, Melody is now the chairman of DreamWorks and is on the board of Starbucks and After School Matters she chairs here in Chicago. And of course Arnie went on to be the school superintendent for the city of Chicago and to be in Obama's cabinet as the education secretary. So those are two of our success stories. We've had several other people who've been here and have done extraordinarily well and gone off to be leaders or stayed here at Ariel. John Rogers Jr. has three monumental accomplishments to his credit so far. First, he has built the largest minority-owned mutual fund firm in the United States, Ariel Investments, which manages billions in assets. Second, he became team captain and played on a Division I basketball team in college. And number three, he beat the legendary Michael Jordan on the basketball court in a game of one-on-one -on -one at Michael's own private basketball camp, Flight School. And I had this vision and dream that I wanted to be able to play you know, Division I basketball. And back at the time, uh, Princeton was typically a top 20 team in the country. Our basketball coach, Pete Carrill, was building a career that ultimately would lead him to be in the Hall of Fame. And uh, I just really wanted to have the chance to play against the best basketball players in the world. And I got that opportunity. It was great. When I was a senior, I got to start against Duke at Cameron Indoor Arena. And I got to play against Michigan State the year after they won the national championship. And it was just a, it was a wonderful opportunity to you know, be able to be exposed to the best basketball players in the world and to learn from one of the best, best basketball coaches in the world. Don't be mad at me, I'm just good. Don't be mad at me, I'm just too good for you guys. Well, y'all think I had this camp just so y'all could beat me? Oh! Fantastic morning! I I can't believe it. It's just uh, 
everything worked out. I was just, just very, very happy. Let me ask you one quick question about John Rogers. He beat Michael Jordan today, the first time Jordan's ever lost at camp. Well, I think it was the Princeton offense that John has been able to play. Pete Carell is totally responsible for that victory. Oh, no. Yeah.